Good morning, everyone. This is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. It is 10 after 4. <laughs> I forgot to upload my video um, for my usual Tuesday, and I am up in the middle of the night uploading the video right now. <laughs> I did edit it yesterday, but on a Monday. Okay, so I'm here with a little project that I want to show you how to reuse and recycle things. I recently purchased these papers. Um, this is the back of the book. This is the front of the book. And I took all the papers out that were included in the book. As you can see, it's perforated. And it shows you on the back how to um, pull the papers out, which doesn't require a whole lot of rocket science there. Although I guess they figured we're not smart enough to figure out perforation on paper. So they show you how to gently remove the sheets. There are 12 sheets of paper and they're rather large. It says uh, 19 and a half inches by 27 and a half inches. And I really like the paper. I had seen it on somebody else's video on YouTube. I don't even remember where or when I saw this, but I fell in love with it and I ordered it. And um, I took my papers out of here, but I, I loved the cover with the blue koi fish and I couldn't I couldn't get rid of it. So I had a I had a thought this morning that I could make something out of the actual cover itself excluding the papers. So this is what I decided to do. I removed the back of the co the cover with the Exacto knife. Set this aside. And then I did remove some white space that was in between all these, but basically this is the back cover of the book, minus the white space I already cut off. And I've decided that I can make books out of this. This will not be made into anything. Uh, I might use it for something later and then cover up this side. We'll see. All right, so what I've done is I've cut this off this is a rather lovely piece of paper. And then this one, I'll set these aside. But my main focus here are these itty bitties. Now these are prints of the paper that is what was contained in the book. And these are gonna become books. So I'm taking the ruler and I'm just cutting, just gonna cut all the white paper off with the exacto knife. Oh, didn't get quite hard enough down here. There we go. And instead of doing overkill with the exacto the whole way, we can just use these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these off and I'm going to pair these prints up. Now granted, these pairs are not, mat they don't match, but that's okay. I don't really care. So what I was thinking is I would pair up these two blues together and I have three green. Well, let me cut them all out and then I can... I can decide what to do with them after that. Um, they're on very shiny, heavy paper, which I really like. I don't want to do um, three whole pamphlet stitch, so uh, what would be easy to do is just take this, use a, um, a stylist and crease them and then fold them and make, you know, a book out of them that way. But I really like doing something different. Maybe what I'll do is I will do pages, pages. That's what I'll do. All right, let me cut the white off the bottom here. All right, let me finish the cutting these up and I'll be back. All right, so I've cut <coughs> these guys apart. And I want to go ahead and make sure that the edges are nice and straight. So I'm going to cut each one of these to the height of one and three quarter inches. 
so that they're nice and straight because I'm bad with straight. <laughs> I don't always get them straight. There we go. There they are. That'll make three books. And then I'm going to cut the white off of this. I thought I was going to do this off camera, but I know these don't match, but it's the way they arranged it on there. So I just take a sliver off this end and I flip it around and I measure it to one and three quarters and then cut it off to make sure that it's all the same size because it is easier for me to do lots of these at the same size than it is to have one that's one and a half and then one that's two inches. It, it, it just, uniformity is easier for mass producing than if you just do one thing at a time. It's just, it's a time factor. Okay, so let's cut this off here. Actually, let me do it with the scissors because it was more accurate than me trying to do it with the paper cutter. And then I can trim the ends off. That's no big deal. All right, so let's do a little trim here to make sure it's same size and one and three quarters. Trim a little off the end because I want the whole piece to be one and three quarters in height. So out of that paper pack that I bought, this little book, I'm going to get extra value out of it because I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six little booklets that are, let's see, I don't even know what the length is. Length is, huh, let's see, uh, they're one and three quarter inches tall and then not quite, they're just a sixteenth of an inch over two and three quarters. But I don't want to trim that off because if I do that, that means that I have to trim a little off this end, a little off this end, and honestly, it's not worth all that effort. So I'm not going to do it. All right. Um, What's next? Okay, so this is the way I do the other books that I've made in the past. We have this fancy thing called a mouse pad. <laughs> I take the mouse pad and I put this on it and I get myself a stylus with one of the smallest balls and I just run it down the edge here. I don't even use this on a board, you know, on one of the boards that has the lines on it. I don't even bother. See, and you've got a nice little thing right here. It does a nice little crease. Okay, so I had an epiphany. Remember the strip that I showed you of this? Well, I cut it down to one and three um, fourths inches wide. It was just, you know, I took a sliver off of it basically. And I'm going to show you how I got these. <laughs> it's very scientific. I took, uh, let's see, I think I took this one. And I put these up next to it. I remember it was just a sixteenth of an inch past two and three quarters. So I cut three of them and I ended up with a very small little skinny piece left over. And I will use that in something later. Then I took the, um, the piece here and flipped it around like this and kind of lined it up as best I could. Wait till you see how scientific this is. I mean, you will be so impressed. Put it like this. Took a pencil. <laughs> it 
marked here and here. And I turned it around. <laughs> and then I marked it here and here. <laughs> oh, and then I take the stylus and I lined it up with the ruler. What I did first is I tried to line it up with this on here for my pencil mark so that I can make sure that I get it semi-straight. And then I just ran the stylus down this way, move this over. I don't, I don't even think this is a quarter of an inch. Well, is it a quarter of an inch? Nope. I think it's about an eighth of an inch. It's not a very wide spine. I'll take this. I hope this is straight. And I take this and do it like I did all the others. Roll it over a little bit to where it's creased. And there we go, there's the second crease. All right, so what I did with some of these others while I was waiting for my um, stuff to transfer to the card is I look to see when it's closed that the spine is lined up here at the top and if there's overhang here I just give it a quick little trim along the edge to make sure it's even. So that it's even on both edges when you close the book. So here are the three from the little strip. And then I have this left over. I'm not sure if I want to do a large piece out of this or if I want to continue to make all these itty bitties. I think I might set that aside to see if if I put these into the Etsy store what sells. And if they don't sell then I'll save that for something else later. It's no big deal. The difference between these and these others is these will have the color spines and these will have the white spines. Now I could color them with something, but I'm afraid that if I do that, I'm going to leak it onto the rest of it and ruin the covers, so I'm not going to do that. All right, so the next part, I've ordered some rice paper off of Amazon, and I'm going to put rice paper in these to keep it Japanese, and um, so now I have to wait a couple days until the rice paper comes, and then I'll be back to do the rice paper insertion in here. In the meantime, I'm going to take scraps of white paper and I'm going to try to figure out the size that I need to insert into the book. So I will do that off camera and then come back with the measurements later. Alrighty, so I had to wait 24 hours before working more on this video because I ordered some rice paper to put in um, these books that I've been making. And this did not go the way I thought it would. Oh, please excuse, the Roomba is beating down the doors as it works its way down the hallway in the house. Okay, so let me go get that rice paper. All right, so I bought this online. Okay, it's not gonna fit in the whole picture here. Okay, there we go. And I didn't pay attention to the cotton content in this paper, and it has a higher cotton content than, say, computer paper. Problem is, is that it is like um, a little, more toothy than um, other kinds of paper and because it is 
Chinese. It has little tiny lines in here because they write up and down, not like we go this way. They write up and down. And so there are lines in here that are probably, let's see, how far apart are they? Half an inch wide. Where they go inside, this is, what's this called? This is called some kind of Japanese writing paper. And, um, chi uh, not Japanese, Chinese. Chinese blank, 30 pieces. It's to teach how to write in Chinese. And this is not going to work because... I used it on um, the regular slider type paper cutter and all it did was rip it. It didn't cut it, it ripped it. Now my blade may be a little bit old but it still cuts computer paper so this needs a, a heavier hand than that. So I used the guillotine paper cutter I have and it worked great. Problem is, is that it's so delicate that it is hard for me to put it inside the book. And I decided that instead of wrestling with the alligator, we're going to go to plan B. So this is plan B. I have some sulfite paper. And I like how heavy the sulfite paper is because certain kinds of ink pens and wet media don't soak through it. Now, it's not like watercolor paper. It's different. Um, so I decided to go ahead and use sulfite paper. No, this is not recycled paper. I did actually take full sheets and cut them up because I don't have any extra bits of sulfite paper, so I did have to use sheets of it. I'm <coughs> excuse me. I'm trying to remember where I left off last time, but let me just start from where I can remember here. Uh, last time I think I was on the video, I had cut these up into sections they were like on the back of these were this wasn't yeah it was um they were on the back of the uh packaging i think it went did it go this way i can't remember anyway so i decided to make little books out of these they're showing you whoops they're showing you all the different kinds of papers that were included in the other paper that I bought, the, this is Japanese wrapping paper. It's not like scrapbook paper. And yes, it's got a little bit higher cotton content, but it is wonderful paper. It's very sturdy. So um, I cut up the outside cover to the paper. It came in a giant book, and then you it's got perforated edges, then you rip the paper out. Let me see. Here's the... Um, Here's the piece in here. Here's all the papers that I ripped out, the perforated edge. Then I cut the cover off, the front and the back. I wasn't going to, but I really liked the way it looked. And I couldn't decide what to do with it, so I did cut it up. And I cut out the sections on the cover that had more colorful sections on it. Alright, so there's that. Then, I decided that if I'm going to sell these in the Etsy store, that I really need to line the inside because it is um, a slick paper so I needed to cover up the white on it I didn't want to use just do I have them all covered now yep I covered them all um, I didn't want them to all be bare white this is a, just a scrap piece so it's just that slick magazine-y type I just guess it's a shiny cardstock of some sort anyway so I took a sheet of this paper which is inside the book and I cut it down smaller and I wanted to use a kind of paper that didn't um, stick out a lot and wasn't colorful for the inside to line the insides of both sides of the little book so I chose the silver paper as opposed to like a bright blue or a bright red so I cut it in strips I know that this is uh, one and three quarters inch tall, and this is a scant under two and a half inches across. So I did cut the strips, and I spent yesterday just lining all of these. These, this is the one that's red, and this is one that was. Uh, I think this was on the front cover, and the red was on the back. So I went ahead and cut all these things, and I lined them. While I was watching, I don't know, something on TV. Can't even remember. It was so good. 
and I got them all covered. So then I cut my, um, let me show it this way. So then I took the, sul the sulfite paper and I cut um, lots of these. <laughs> so I tried various numbers to put into the um, book. Like I would put it in there and see if the book would close. And I would put six or seven of these single signatures in there to see if it would work. And then sometimes it wouldn't close properly. The spine wouldn't be flush. I would lay it down this way and I would look and I'd be like, no, that's still too fat. So I whittled the number down to five of these. I did not double up the signatures because honestly, I didn't want to sew all these little silly books to sell them on Etsy for less than $10. To me, that's, that just wasn't worth it for what they are. So five signatures and then I'll show you how I prepared them as soon as I figure out where the paper clips are. Here we go. I'll use these off of some I did yesterday. So these clips are great for material, but they're not great for books if you don't put something underneath them because they will leave dimples in your paper. I found this out. So the off cuts from the sulfite paper I took and I folded into quarters and then I used it to clamp down. I'll show you. So I'm going to take, this is PVA. I just kind of line them up, tap them down. I take the PVA and run it down. And for some reason, the, the, um, the sulfite paper does a really good job absorbing the glue. I was so surprised at how, how well, it, well it takes the glue. So I just glob it on, run my finger down the sides to make sure there's nothing hanging over the side, which there is because I get a little overzealous with the glue because I want to make sure these don't fall apart when people buy them. All right, so then I take this and I put it right here as close to the edge as I can because I want to make sure these are pinched tight, the signatures. I don't want it to get into the glue because it messes up when I go to put them in the book. Then I put these little clippies on and if I don't ram the clip down to make it flush with this, then um, I don't leave any marks in the book. So then I take this, I lean it up against something solid and let it dry for, well, these that I have right here. I did it nine o'clock last night. Um, PVA when it dries is a little bit sticky that's okay. I'm good with that. So here is the signature. Nothing's falling out and the page is open, which just thrills me to no end. <laughs> Here's my little booklet. Then I take a toothpick. That Now this is my um, bead toothpicks, the ones that have got crusty crud on them. And I want to um, use a really good toothpick to do this because this is messy and then I throw it away. So I just go into my bead toothpicks that are mucked up and I take E6000 because I think that E6000 works much better holding the books than PVA. I just put a little blob on the end of the toothpick and then I just kind of gently guide it down the side. I do try to make sure that I don't leave any goo on the sides because it will glue to the covers and ruin them because I've already ruined one. But I consider that to be my experiment to know what my limits are. And see, I don't run my finger down it and if it's good, it's good. I lay the book in the empty spot where it's white down the middle. That's the spine. I found out I did not need to cover the spine. It wasn't worth the trouble for these little books. I put it in there and I make sure that it's even at the top, even at the bottom. And yes, there's a little bit of overhang here, but it'll be fine. I'll take care of that later. So I make sure that it's pushed in flush against the back of the spine. Then I open it flat it's because I know people want to open the little books. I mash it down hard. Then I take my little contraptions here again. And this time, this is only to make sure that the book sits upright while it is drying. And 
and I don't want to ram it down there because I don't want to leave those little little dimples in the paper because people don't appreciate having their paper dimpled unless it's supposed to be. And then I mash it down again and I lean it up against something on the desk so that it will stay balanced, basically stay balanced. I, I use that word loosely. <laughs> it will stay that way. So it do, I don't want it to touch either side of the cover with the E6000. I want it to glue there. And then they're, they're all sitting upright. This is the PVA glue period. This is what it looks like after it has the um, E6000 in the middle. And this is what I did yesterday. So you can take your little book and you can open it without it breaking the spine. And you can open the pages. Now it's not going to open flat. It's not that kind of book. You can do a little quickie sketch in it. You can put phone numbers, passwords, whatever you like. They're just little quickie books made out of the um, cover for Japanese paper that I bought online. They are one and three, about approximately one and three quarter inches tall and about from spread open, I think it is seven to uh, it's a one scant mark under two and a half because I didn't want this to overhang. Now, when I do this, when I put these in here, now this is not glued, so I'm just showing you what's going to happen. All right, so I pretend I've glued this in the book. What happens is I have too much cover so I have a little overhang, if you can see that. There's a little teeny overhang. It's hard to see in the camera. See this little overhang here? After the E6000 glues, I go back and I open up the book with the spine like this, and I make sure everything's lined up just in case I glued it incorrectly, which I did one yesterday, and so now it is going into my lamp. And then I take the X-Acto knife and I trim it off. Then I move the papers this way and make sure it's open properly and then I trim off the ever uh, the other side so that they open and the the text is lined up nicely with the edge here. Now they're not perfect but you know it's handmade and when you get something that's handmade you expect there to be some kind of human made flaws whatever. But I just thought they were a cute little book. I have made many. <laughs> Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whoops, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen here, and then I have all these that are. Um, ready to cut the paper for these and then these will be next. Now I'm, I'm trying to decide do I want to create a larger book with this or do I want to make the little mini books. I might make a mini book with a thicker spine so you get a little more paper in there and those might be hand sewn I don't know. Um, I will do one and experiment with it. Like this little guy right here. He did not go well. He opens fine, but when I cut it and where I glued it, I did not glue it and make sure the bottom was lined up. So his the bottom part of the book should be trimmed off with the X-Acto knife. And then the top part's too short. So he was scooted too far this direction inside the cover. Um, I don't want to trim them all up with an exacto knife since I don't really cut that straight. <laughs> Even with a ruler, I get it wrong. So um, he might just live in my lamp of books that are rejects, <laughs> but they still are books. So that's that guy. Alrighty, so I think that's it for showing you how I make these little books. 
and um, I imagine I'm thinking that I have tons of these envelopes that I made oh my gosh years and years ago out of scrapbook paper and I really like them so what I was thinking was when somebody buys the book that I will slip the little book along with my business card in here and this is the way people will receive the little book is inside this now they'll be different colors they won't be purple because these are slated for um, another project but I thought about putting these in some kind of a little envelope presentation because they're just so cute and they're very Japanese except for the sulfite paper <laughs> which is who knows it might be Chinese <laughs> I don't know, these days right here are two that I finished and I posted these on Instagram so here are two that I did yesterday as my test cases and I did glue paper on this side to cover up where it had ripped or it had stuck to this side and I didn't like the way it looked so I did glue the paper on both sides I'm not doing that in all the books although I say that as I'm looking at this <laughs> we shall see anyway so then I took some of my doodle art <coughs> And I put it on the book because it was so blue. I was like, my, you know, will anybody buy anything that looks that plain? <coughs> Excuse me, I have a frog. So I glued this on the front. And this was on Instagram. So if you see this and it looks familiar, it's because I posted on Instagram yesterday or day before yesterday. I'm saying that as I'm filming this on a Thursday morning at 4 o'clock in the morning. This will be posted next week on Tuesday. Hopefully. <laughs> So I just took these, um, I might take these others, and I did this to make sure they stay closed. I have a book press, my husband made me a larger book press than the little bitty one that I made months ago. And I might just take these and all, lay these all flat and put them in the book press for about a week and see how they do in the book press. I'm thinking about selling these um, in the Etsy store as I mentioned. But it'll be in a grouping because, to be honest with you, to mail one thing like this in a first-class envelope, if it's not flat enough and the post office can't shove it through their little thing that says letter or package, then it costs me $4 to mail one of these. Well, if you're only charging 5 to $6 for it, it's not worth it for all the time, time I put into it. and It's just not worth it to me. So what I might do is I might sell them in groups of four or five and a price appropriately so that when I, you know, I eat the shipping cost, but I also have to figure out shipping cost. Is it worth it to ship one thing that costs $5 when the shipping will cost me $3 and 81 cents? It's not worth it. I mean, how bad of a business person do you have to be to, to, to sell something for $5 and it costs you $4 to mail it? <laughs> I mean, come on. Anyway, so this is what I've been up to for the last couple days. And when this paper runs out, that's the end of these books. I have no more of this cover. Uh, once this red, I think that's it. Once this red part is gone, this is gone. The idea is gone. So that's it for me for today. And when I come up with another rabbit hole, <laughs> I'll be back to post another video. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.